Shalom real quick. Give him all praise to Allah. Shalom to those who are left out there. It says, and then the title of this video was Men in the House Rules. Uh, this is uh, something that we were speaking on Saturday, and Apostle Gabar had mentioned that uh, that uh, if a woman received, you know, benefits, government benefit, she couldn't, she had to kick the man out of her house and only deal with the kids. Like the kids can stay, the woman can stay and, and receive uh, benefits, welfare, whatever, whatever have you. But you had to kick your man out. So I said that that, I said, I'm from New York. I'm from uh, the, uh, that era in the 60s, because this applied in the 60s. And all my friends that I had in the neighborhood or nearby neighborhoods, they had mothers with children and the, and the man would stay in the house and she, she would get welfare. Now the thing was, if a man wanted to get welfare, they were considered able-bodied, so they so they would uh, they would encourage them look get a job and we'll work out. You had these pro job programs, that, like you had. Um, and I was a, a product of that. You had the CETA program and the Manpower program that Reagan did away with, and it, and it gave uh, you know mainly Jakes. And lower class people a skill because I I was a I went to the to that program for auto mechanics, so I didn't become a full fledged auto mechanic, but I knew how to deal with cars, cars and so, so forth. You know, I can get a car that can get started. I can, you know, troubleshoot a car and get it started. So I learned that. So this is what they did for for the for the men, mainly for the men and the women, but the men mostly. Uh, so they had those programs. And um, I remember going to the program and to show you the wickedness of uh, Israelites, that about 90% of those got those jakes that went to that program, wouldn't do it. They wouldn't learn the shit. They went for a check because they got a check at the end of the week. So they wouldn't learn. They were goofing off. They would not show up. I remember a couple of them would go in, sign in, and then leave and then come back at the end of the day and sign out. And then on Fridays, they would come get their check. And um, so this man, and it, it, it's, it's, the scriptures speak about being fed by the face of the dragon in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 12. Now, I'm not, Pat, I'm not giving the, this man credit, but... Um, Esau did give them opportunities. I'm not, I'm not siding with the white man, but at that time, before Reagan, I remember that before Reagan, you had all kind of programs to get. You can be a, uh, you know, a auto mechanic. You can, that's before computers, but carpenter. You can get any type of skill, and the teacher that I had, which I had two two teachers for auto mechanics, there was a theory part where you sat in the classroom and we read out of a textbook uh, about auto parts and stuff, electrical components in the car. And then you had the actual, we had an actual garage in the school where you had the, the main teacher where we would actually do things. We'd actually take like the teacher's cars and other cars that were broken down. And we would fit And that. I remember the teacher get, said to me, it, it, there was a teacher whose car couldn't start. So she told the mechanic, which I remember the head teacher looked just like Fred Flintstone. Motherfucker looked just like Fred Flintstone. Oh, I forget his name. He was a German. And I said, God damn, I said, that's fucking Fred Flintstone in the, in the flesh. And he came to me and another Benjaminite dude, a man, I, I believe his name was Leah Kraft. And he threw the keys at us and he said, the, the car's up there, go ahead and get it started. Cause he had confidence in myself and this, this other brother. <coughs> so we went up there and we, we, uh, we, uh, 
what do you call it, troubleshoot it, and we found a problem. We got this car started, and we say, well, look, if you change this part, you, we got it started so you can get home, but you got to change this part. So the so the the mechanic, the mechanic teacher, he knew who was serious, who wanted to learn, and I was one of them. There was maybe there was a handful of guys that were really learning, but the, the rest of them, man, ninety percent of them, them guys are fucking goofballs, man. They didn't want to do shit. They goof out. They'll they'll leave, and the, and the teacher didn't care. He said, "Look, if you want to leave, you can leave. You're not gonna get no skill." You know, so these guys would come get a check, bullshit, goof off, play fucking dice around the corner. Some of them come in there drunk, and um, and see what in a, in a way what Reagan did was kind of a good thing because he said, "Man, you niggas don't appreciate nothing, even the devil trying to help you." But like, I, and that was all in program, all in programs that Jake had. That J- it was mainly for Jake men, but for women too, but mainly for men to get skills, to get skills. And uh, like I said, you would get maybe five or ten percent of the Jakes that are serious about it, but the rest of them would goof goof off. So, you know, they didn't learn shit. They ain't learn shit. So now we were going back and forth because Gab- the possible ball likes to always get one up on somebody. That's that's his thing. He likes to get one up on somebody. So I'm reading a story, right? <laughs> and I'm telling him he's he's, you know, going. He's talking about the movie Claudine, which was based in New York. I believe it was Harlem. I lived in Harlem. I lived in Brooklyn. I had chicks I used to deal with in Brooklyn, so I lived. I had keys, different chicks in Brooklyn, so I lived in Harlem. I lived in Brooklyn. As a child, I grew up in in, uh, in uh, Harlem, in the Bronx, and other places in the city. And um, we we you know we came up under the you know under the welfare system. But that's when Jake was working. That's when Jake was really working, and Jake was in the house. So the only time a woman would get welfare is because there was no man in the house. It, it was it didn't they didn't say well look. You got to kick your current man out. Because guess what? There'll be lawsuits. This, this thing will be in the news with all these black lawyers. This this, this will be a major a lawsuit. So I was saying in, in so many words that Claude Dean was pretty much Hollywood bullshit. You know, as fine as Diane Carroll is, you mean to tell me she couldn't get a, 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 a fucking bank president? And then the dude, the, the, the dude that played uh, the oldest son, He got his tubes tied. I ain't never heard no nigga in the hood say, I'm going to go to the hospital and get my tubes tied. So that was some fucking Hollywood bullshit. The part where the social worker came and they'll get the the toast again. That shit, that motherfucker didn't happen in the hood. If there was a man in the house, there was a man in the house. But if the man wanted to apply for welfare, they would inquire, well, why don't you have a job? Which what do you got now from from that? What is, what is, what does Jake do now? They live off a different woman. They sell drugs. They stick up kids, and they niggas. Look at the look at the look at the the so called men out here. They're 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 fucking gremlins, man. So even the devil tried to help them. <laughs> you know, fed in the in the, from the face of the from the, from the face of the serpent. For uh, three and a half, for three and a half, you know, it, it goes into three hundred and fifty years, fed fed by the face of the serpent. So that's what that the pro, those programs were about. But I ain't never all the friends I had that whose mothers didn't have a man who had a boyfriend at the house. I ain't never I would I would have heard, heard about it. Oh, the welfare is coming to the house. We gotta hide all our shit. That shit did not fucking happen. But now. I'm reading the story, right? So you got to read the story right here. And it, and it's happened in California. So that's California. I don't know nothing about California. That shit would not, that shit, they wouldn't even try that shit in New York. Man, you can be on welfare and shit. You kids get welfare and food stamps and all that other good shit. And a man could be living in the fucking house. They don't care. They don't send social, social workers around. So that so that scene in uh, Claude, Claudine, whatever the movie the name of the movie, and I saw that movie, a classic movie, 
I said, that was Hollywood bullshit. But now they say it happened in California. But these people should sue them, you know? It said, uh, crew was analysis draws on uh, quali qualitative interviews with 39 black voucher holders over a five-year period in Antel Antelope Valley, a suburb of Los Angeles County. A suburb of Los Angeles County. Now, in Los Angeles, in the hood, them cops are, are military. That whole militaristic cop thing, prior to that, cops didn't do that, man. They wasn't militaristic, but they had this just one guy, I forget the whole story, and he was from the military. He's like a, I, I don't know if he was a drill sergeant. So they came up with a new thing to militarize the police. That's why all the police are militarized now. You know? So now, if that happened in, in California, you know, then that, or LA, I didn't know about that. But that didn't happen in America. That didn't happen in New York. Okay, I'm going by my experiences, all right? You're giving this double too much credit. It said the interview, the interviews documented the experiences of voucher tenants and how program rules impacted their personal, family, and social life. Three fourths of interview interviewees were women, and over four fifth were black. So that applied not to Jake, but uh, Mexicans, Esau, all of them, right? This was a thing, a program, and they had to turn that program around because they should be these people that have suffered from that. They should be suing them in federal court because the constitution makes, uh, speaks about um, our welfare, the general welfare, that's in the constitution, the word general welfare. So that whole thing came about with um, FDR, um, uh, Roosevelt, a, a, chicken, um, a chicken in every pot. And that's when he took away the gold. So dude, that's why you got, Men that's on welfare, that's dealing with the government, you know, whatever whatever benefits they got. All of us, in one way or another, get a certain amount of benefits. If you go to the, how how many of y'all went to a damn hospital emergency room, and um, you get some major work done, they don't tell you what the price is. We're talking about fifty thousand and up. Fifty thousand and up, but you sign the paperwork. Oh, I do this. I don't. I don't work right now. No. Or the job that I work can't afford to pay the bills. So once you got that information, then the med the Medicaid the Medicare kicks in. Medicare kicks in because I was in the hospital for four days, um, and they said I was going. Man, if you didn't come in, if you waited one more day, you would have died. That's what they always said. So when I came, that's when Obamacare was big so i was working so they said that what the doctors kept saying they saying you're unemployed right you're not working right they were like hoping i would say i'm not working because if i said i was unemployed and not working that they would get that money quick but the fact that i said i was working it was, it was not they they weren't sad or nothing about it but about that but it's easier if somebody's not working. So the benefits are kicked right in and the doctors get paid, the hospital get paid. So what they did with me, I had to fill out an application. I had to give them the, the, uh, the, the job that I was working, where I live, you know, what are my expenses like? They ask you all that bullshit. And then basically they give you a card and they said, well, you got a Medi Medicaid, a Medi Medicaid, Medicare, Medicare, Medicaid for old, you know, people, senior citizens. Uh, Medi Medicare, Medi Medicare, they pay for it. They pay for everything. Then um, a couple months later, I went to the dentist and I had a tooth pull. And I saw that showed them the card and they just took the information and said, you don't got to pay nothing. I had my tooth, too. It was a, a 2016, the beginning, the, the beginning of 26, February. 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I had that card, 
And the guy said, you know, do you have any insurance? I said, yeah, I got Medicaid. So he said, give me the card, give me the information. And I left, I didn't pay a fucking dime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't pay a goddamn dime. So we're still being fed by the, the face of the serpent. But this incident right here is, like I said, a California incident in LA. And this was clearly unconstitutional. So if those people were smart, they can, they can take this county or whatever part of LA and they can sue them for damages for not um, supplying, them, supplying to them the general welfare. So Jake got to know the law, you know? Jake, you got to know the law. If you had lawyers up front backing them up, and where was the motherfucking Black Panthers? Wasn't them guys lawyers? Shouldn't they, they that shit never came, this is the first time I'm hearing this. But anyway, they put, got that idea from that movie, because where the mo are movies made? They made in Hollywood. So they said, we're going to make a movie based in New York, based in Harlem, and we're going to use this program, you know, in the movie. And that shit never fucking happened. Like I said, I'm saying it again. Now, I mean, it had, like according to this, it happened in L.A. I don't, I don't know nothing about no motherfucking L.A. I ain't never been to L.A. I don't want to go to L.A. In other words, I don't, I don't want to be in this fucking place. But if it happened back there, it happened back there. I didn't know nothing about that. But I do know I had a lot of friends that had mothers that had no fathers or had boyfriends living in the fucking house. And they were getting their fucking welfare. They were getting their fucking food stamps. They were getting their Medicaid, their Medicare and all that. So, you know, like I said, a lot of these movies that you see, Jake, they're for Edomites. To, oh, this is how they really live. No, we don't really live like that. Like they got these new, these new shows like Power, these, these gangster type shows. Power is one of them. It was another one, something Empire, and the whole fucking family of fucking drug dealers, and they all they all got <laughs> the mother's a drug dealer. You know she got a fucking Uzi behind the couch. We don't fucking live like that, man. Your mothers are respectable people. Your mothers, your grandmother, in these damn movies, they got the grandmother. You know she got she got a twenty two and a stocking and shit. That's all Hollywood bullshit. And then the way they the way they talk, that hood shit is is uh, exaggerated hood shit. Like every once in a while, they'll be arguing, right? And then the dude said, "It's like that," and the other dude would say, "Yeah, it's like that." We don't talk like that, man. We don't talk like we talk we talk regular. Sometimes you talk so called slang, and the, the mom's is talking. She got she got a fucking. Uh, you know, she got a razor, you know, between her fucking breasts and she's talking shit like she's in the hood. That's that's to demonize us, like watch black people because, you know, the, the, the moms, she might be making a sweet potato pie like Miss Johnson. But if you get on her wrong side, she's going to bust a cap in your ass. That's what they put out there for Esau and these other Jakes that don't know no better. They always exaggerate and make shit up. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.